My next guest is stepping up on short notice to take on Priscilla Kaushera, UFC 291. July 29th is next Saturday. It's Miranda Maverick back here on the program. Miranda, how are you? I'm doing good, doing good. Short notice, uh, ready to get back in there. That, that's excellent. When did you find out about this fight? When did you get? Uh, when did you know that this was a possibility in getting this fight? I believe it was last Friday, so almost right at the two-week mark, like two weeks in a day. Were you kind of preparing for something short notice, or was it just one of those things, the opportunity came up, you had to seize it? The opportunity came up, and I had to seize it. I actually wasn't planning on fighting until probably fall, but it's a good opponent. It was a good timeline for me. And, you know, I kind of enjoy short notices. Get in there, uh, get the work done fast, not be quite as sore or tired or stressed for as long, and go in there and get paid. Well, and the fact, I'm sure it's in Utah, pretty close by. It's at elevation. You're already training at elevation. I'm sure that was part of the decision as well. For sure. I think I have the advantage when it comes to elevation, you know, training up in this high altitude. I think Salt Lake City's even higher. Um, I've been out there before, was supposed to fight on the last numbered card that was in Salt Lake City. Um, something came up with Shanna that didn't work out, but I'm excited to be back out there. Never fun to talk about a loss. We'll just quickly talk about that fight at UFC 289. What did you take away the most from that fight that you're bringing into this one? Uh, you know, I got hurt and did not focus as I should have in the fight. Um, it was kind of a very odd, scary thing to have had happen. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen in any of my future fights. Even if it does, I hope my mind will be right uh, to handle it accordingly. Um, but aside from that, you know, there's a lot of things I could have done different. My home is kind of the grappling and we saw me go to grappling when I probably shouldn't have in that fight. And I ended up losing because of it. So a lot to learn, a lot to improve always, um, but trying to get back up there in the win column and do better next time. And just to clarify, because you kind of mentioned there was like an injury. Was this something that happened during the fight or was it going into the fight? What exactly happened? It happened in the fight. Um, I basically didn't get hit right in the eye or anything, but had an optical concussion. Um, oh, it's damn. Okay. Basic of it. So I uh, had a lot of swelling on my optical nerve shut off my eye during the fight um kind of slowly got worse and worse and then round three it was pretty much blind and it was scary i thought i had torn my retina again or detached it entirely so um definitely eye problems always it seems like but healing from that all the way recovered surgeons already approved me and everything so getting back in there and hoping for the best yeah, no, that's good that everything worked out. You got to, you know, be careful with your eyes. You said this had happened before or you had something happen. When did you have another eye issue? Um, I've had retina tears twice. Uh, both my eyes have sclera buckles um, around them from when I got my retinas torn. Um, we found out about it actually two days before I was supposed to make my UFC debut. And oh, of course, promotions before the UFC don't do a very in-depth eye exam and UFC does, and they found that. So I'm actually very lucky that they did find it when they did so that I could get it taken care of. And unfortunately, we saw MMA fans in their worst, like we do every now and then after the fight. I could not believe the amount of comments you were getting. And I know you were public about this, about the death threats. Like people got to relax. As people are fighting. It's, you know, you're, you're putting your you're putting your whole job uh, on display to everyone to see and for people to comment on that. Just awful. Just how surprised were you by that? Because like, again, it's it's just a fight, man. I really wasn't surprised, maybe surprised by the volume of it. You know, I've had hate before, but it was a lot, like I'd say 40% of the messages. And you get the good messages too. It just never seems to outweigh it, you know. Um, but it's not really surprising. People put their money on the line for it and sometimes more than they should and end up losing and blame the fighters for what happens in there. And that's part of the game. Like if you're going to gamble on something, you better be prepared to lose as much as you're prepared to win. Um, did I imagine they were betters? I, cause I could just see like, I, that's the most annoying thing too. It's like, you, you know, you, I, I bet money on you, you owe me money, like all this stuff. It's like, you're the one who decided to put the money on it. No one put that risk out there, you know? So exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that was crazy. Um, did you see what Sean Strickland said about, uh, like your comments? I don't know if you caught that or not. I didn't at all. Okay. Probably better that way. No, he, oh, well, he basically just said that like, um, like he, I think took what you said is like, you were complaining about the, you know, getting threats and stuff. And then Strickland was just saying that like, and you know, like going to do that. Like, this is what you signed up for type thing. But like I said, I didn't really get that sense when you were sort of letting people know. I think it's important to tell people that, Hey, fighters are getting death threats. Like this is ridiculous. You know? I think it's important for other fighters, especially younger in the sport and stuff. When I started out in the UFC and even in Invicta, like I was not used to the hate, was not prepared for it, so to speak. And it can really mess with you up here. So uh, it's more of a, hey, this happens to more than one person. We see suicide all the time. 
by people on social media that get bullied, you know, like the cyber bullying and stuff, especially with young kids. So that's mainly the reason I talked about it. I get it every fight, whether I win or I lose, but this one was definitely more uh, profound, more voluminous than usual. Let's talk about 291. That's where we're here today. Uh, Priscilla, a 12 and 4 record. Uh, stylistically, how are you looking at this fight? You know, I see her as coming in. She's a very big brawler, doesn't have as much experience with me as far as technique and training. Um, and I plan to use that, used to use my techniques, use my all around game instead of just striking or just wrestling and win this fight wherever it goes. Um, but I don't think she's going to be able to stop going to the ground. You mentioned sort of getting, you know, taking advantage of this opportunity. What type of camp have you had sort of leading into this? I know you're training all the time, but it's obviously different when you have a, a fight booked. Right. I've been traveling quite a bit uh, before I took this fight, but I was over on the East Coast. I trained with Goat Shed MMA down in Florida for oh, nice. a week or so and had a really hard training for that. I was doing jiu-jitsu before that as I was traveling. Um, so it's not like I was out of shape. I wasn't eating very unhealthy or anything like that. So came straight from there back to Colorado and was back to training and a couple of days later got the call. So this fight has been one of those rush camps to where everybody's like, let's make sure she's ready, make sure she's in shape. So it hasn't been a fun week as far as how much torture I've gone through, but uh, I feel in shape. I feel like my cardio is on point. Uh, my weight is on point and I'm ready to go. Um, who did you get to work with? When I think of the goat shed, I think of like Jillian Robertson's over there. Like who else did you have a chance to work with? Uh, just a lot of 125 men, actually. Jillian oh, cool. was still recovering from her last fight. I saw her and got to do some technique training with her. Um, but I worked with a lot of 125 pound, 135 pound men. Um, and it was really great. I might be back there to visit again and just cross train here and there. Some pretty good weather over there too. Can't complain about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, got the uh, and, and, th and then what about uh, back in Colorado? Uh, who, who'd you mainly get to sort of work with uh, this time around? It's kind of the same way with guys. Um, and then there's Kai Bennett getting ready for her and Victor fight in a few weeks. Um, who else have I been working with? Yeah, mainly just guys that I've been training with. Uh, Courtney Cameron's given me a couple rounds. She's in bare knuckle uh, right now. So if people have heard of those names, but this camp has kind of been thrown together real quick, you know, two or three sparrings and we're going in there. So it's not very specific training partners planned out like I usually would. Speaking of uh, training camp, what do you make of Rose moving up to your division? I think that was a bit of a surprise to people. It definitely is a surprise to me as well. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how she does. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting fight with her and Manon. Um, who will be in your corner for this fight? Um, it will be Justin Houghton. And then I actually, um, Elliot Marshall will not be in my corner this time, although he's still like coaching me, main coach. Um, he just had something for his children come up. So it'll be Kyle Wright, uh, Black Belt at Easton, and then my dad as usual. Nice. That's great. And uh, how's this fight playing out in July 29th? I'm going to go in there and win, hopefully fast. I hope to get it uh, done quick and get out of there. Yeah, exactly. Enjoy the rest of the card. That sounds good. What did you think of, and again, I know not your division, but uh, Myra Silva defeating Holly Holm last week in the main event. Holly's first submission loss since 2016. What did you make of that fight? You know, Holly's getting older, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, she made a mistake. I didn't really watch the fight in person, so I don't know how it was going before then. But you can get caught with anything. Um, you know, I, I heard, uh, what's her name, Marat? Myra Silva, yeah. Myra. Um, yeah. I heard her say, you know, calling out for the title shot and everything. But I think Raquel definitely deserves the next title shot against um, uh, Juliana Pena. And from there, uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, Myra could fight the winner. You never know what they right. decide. Or, or fight Irene. Like, Aldana had a rough fight for sure, but I think that was one of her worst performances against Nunez. And mm -hmm. I think they could fight, and the winner of that one fights the winner of the title. Speaking of uh, you referencing 289, uh, what did you think of Juliana Pena's, like, she was there at the fights, she was calling at Nunez, Nunez retires. Like, what did you make of all that trash talk? I know you're someone that, you know, do a little bit of trash talk when it's needed, but, uh, you know, a lot of people are think it's, you know, trying to sell, you know, the division. And then there's others that are like, what are you doing? Amanda Nunez retired. Like, why are you chasing after someone that you're not going to fight? Right, exactly. I think there's like mixed views of it. You know, yeah, she can be getting hyped up and trying to get herself more hype. That's all it is for her. You know, she's trying to play a business game. Uh, but I definitely didn't think it was classy the way she handled it when Nunez retired. Like you should be happy for someone and the accomplishments and opportunities they've brought to the sport. Um, but I also get that she wanted to fight her again and was trying to hype up that fight. And then the hype kind of got lost. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree. You sort of see both sides of it there. Um, do you want to get one more fight in this year if all goes well, you're healthy? Do you want to get one more in or you kind of just take the rest of the year off? No, I'd love to get one more in and I'd love it to be before Christmas, hopefully, so I can enjoy a couple of the holidays at least. I know, people <laughs> don't think of that, right? Like you want to be able to, like a lot of fighters don't get to enjoy a lot of the big holidays, right? Because usually it's around fight mm -hmm. time, just depending on things or you're training or you're getting ready for something, right? So. 
Exactly, exactly. Um, how's your artwork going? I haven't, I don't think we've talked about this in a while. Uh, you're still doing that on your, is it Patreon? I think is you're, you're doing it, right? Or is it only fans? I can't remember which one it is, but it's some sort of paywall thing. Yeah. So I don't actually do my artwork on the pay stuff. I just do like pictures, fight camp, getting ready and stuff like that on Patreon. Um, but I have my drawing that I do on the side, like any commissioned art that I do. Um, I actually have like five that I need to be working on right now. Um, but with this fight coming up, I'm probably going to push it to the side. But it's funny you brought it up. I actually did two outlines today. So. There you go. I was reading your mind. It was, it was great. Um, and, and, and just a uh, last question, something that happened, obviously, since the last time you and I spoke. Um, would you make a Macy Barber finishing Amanda Rebus? I think that was a very surprising performance uh, just because we haven't seen Macy get a finish in a while. Right. I actually hadn't watched that fight yet. I want to watch oh, no it, worries. but okay, I was yeah. focused on my own fight then. And now this one. Um, I kind of go back and keep up with the division. I just don't get the opportunity to sit down and watch the fights every weekend. No, no, totally. And they do. There's so many fights. Like even this weekend, we got the London card and there's all this stuff going on. Oh, I got to ask as well. One last one I do have to mention. Okay. What did you think of Vancouver? Because uh, we didn't actually get to do an interview in person. I know it didn't line up with the media day and stuff, but did you did you like it over there? It seemed like you had a good time. Other than I the did. Fight. I liked it. It was different. Uh, beautiful out there. Beautiful city for sure. Uh, very like rich city. You know, a lot of a lot of money in there. You can tell they take care of their for city. Sure very well um but uh the fans i had not experienced that before you know like coming out of the hotel and people coming up and wanting autographs and stuff like that so it was pretty cool uh, my husband even they thought he was a fighter there a few times and asked <laughs> he me looks to like a fighter picture. by the way yeah. yeah and asked me to take the picture for them and then he'd be like uh, i'm not the fighter she is <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's good. Uh, that, that's awesome. Hey, Miranda, thanks for doing this again. I know you got a million things going on before this fight. Always appreciate you making the time. If there's anyone you want to thank before we get out of here, sponsors, social media, your Patreon, any of that, I'll give you the last word. Well, thank you for having me on, of course. And thank you for my management, Lamont uh, Chappelle Agency. So LCA Sports Management, um, my coaches, the whole team out here that's gotten me ready now twice in the last month and a half. And I'm excited to go in there and show it all up. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter at Fear the Maverick and check out my website or my Patreon. I have a bunch of new gear on my website that you can go buy to support me.